Over the weekend, Stugatz, and I have told you this before, at one point, uh, Disney was no, uh, had no interest in getting into what they viewed as cockfighting, what John McCain was calling cockfighting, which was mixed martial arts. A partnership with mixed martial arts was viewed as too dirty to be something that Disney would get involved with. This is when John Skipper was running the company. Wouldn't even take meetings with Dana White. Wouldn't be seen next to the octagon because Dana White wanted to use powerful people to get the deals that he wants to get so he can run the sewer business over there that is the fighting sports. Over the weekend, Dana White, because Disney is woke, Stugatz. In Florida, Disney is too woke. Dana White, in partnership with Disney, goes to the fights with Trump and Kid Rock and Tucker Carlson as Bill Burr's wife, Nia, double middle fingers. Uh, Wait, he went, he went to the fights with who? Uh, well, let me paint the picture for you. I was there in the yeah, building, the, the Mecca, greatest you know stadium in the world or whatever they call it. They, New York has been Arena. very, very Arena, successful. Sorry. New York has been very successful for uh, UFC the last few weeks. But I, I want to show people here... The choices made during the pandemic when Disney started bleeding money and stuff. You've gone into partnership with, with a production company that produces its own material. I cannot explain to you how much power Dana White has over everything that he's executing, both at ESPN and in a sport where Vince McMahon just cashed out. 30% of his stock and got $700 million for 30% of his ownership of this, uh, this, this fusing of businesses that has been Dana White and Vince McMahon. And in, they, in the case of Dana White, can now use Disney as a tool because he's got so much power over this. And Disney, which is too woke, it's Tucker Carlson, it's Kid Rock, and it's Donald Trump. That's like the white supremacy Avengers you just rattled off. So here's the thing. like Right before, so the, the main card starts at 10 o'clock, and that's where the pay-per-view kicks in. The lights go dark. They do their usual uh, song and dance, and then all of a sudden the lights turn on. You hear American Badass, and then all of a sudden you know who's coming out. Trump gets on the screen. Kid Rock's behind him. Tucker Carlson's behind him. Dana's in an all-black suit, and they're walking out of the tunnels to mixed reviews. Some people were cheering. Some people were not. But it's just an incredible scene where you know it's going to happen, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't wait. There it is. Just an explosion. It's crazy. It is. It is an amazing power move uh, by a guy who has, you know, can survive slapping his wife in public and is in such deeply embedded partnership with ESPN that ESPN doesn't say anything about it because he's got all the power. And he well, what can ESPN do, though, Dan? If they were to say something about it, Stugatz, what are they going to say? It's Disney. Stugatz, like Disney's I know, but they made a deal with Dana White and with the UFC, and Dana White chooses to walk into the fights with who he chooses to I walk know, into but, the fights but with. But you got out of politics pretty good. You got yes, out of, you, did. You, got, right. you got you got out of politics after George Floyd after sending corporate statements that were you know suggested that you weren't going to be in this business and now you are whether you want to or not because you can't control his production company because he uh, runs the whole thing and he can flout it in your face with Disney's backing uh, and I'm just I'm just showing you what shifted there you could care to ignore it if you want um, it, it might not be interesting to you, but it's a choice. It's, it's a moneyed choice that's, that's been made. And I, I will tell you again that in Florida, Disney's allegedly too woke. In Florida, Disney's on the wrong side of politics. But here, they are in bed with the person who's governing the sewer. And the sewer disposes of these athletes in a way that profits him a great deal and also control job politically, publicly with Disney's backing. We will descend further and further into uh, a conversation about inconsistencies and hypocrisies that will simply ignore that this is the best thing to happen to Kid Rock's career uh, and in a very long time. Uh, he is being rewarded uh, somehow for machine gunning a bunch of Bud Lights, and that's the time that we're living in. And if you just told me this in the 90s, I would have been very confused. But, but that's but that's the grift right now. There's no actual cancel culture. It's a, it's a myth. In fact, if you lean up against... If you bump up against what is conventional political correctness, there's a great, great pot of gold waiting for you. In fact, conservatives have kind of revived stand-up comedy. You say that cancel culture is a myth. What's not a myth is shooting up beer cans at Bud Light did alter 
the way that corporations are afraid yes. of summoning a kid rock from the 90s to shoot up their product when they want to sit this stuff out. I'm, I keep looking at the corporations and telling people, when do you have enough money that you can stand for stuff and it can just be Ben and Jerry's? Like, really stand for stuff. Not everybody put out the statements after George Floyd. And then we got back to business. Like, we got back to the, the stuff corrected itself and it's like it didn't happen. It's like there were protests in the streets a few years ago and then everyone, everyone shook and everyone was bothered by, you know, this month, this streaming service is going to give you Black History Month movies for free because that's how we're going to deal with George Floyd. And then we got back to business. And I, the reason I just pointed out to you is just to marvel that in 2023, Stu Guts, to legitimately marvel at it, there is a lane for I'm going to be all-powerful, counterculture, white guy who answers to no one, and I'm going to win at the fighting sport. I'm go This is a man who signed in an alley a Fox extension that, that saved his sport. The Fertitta brothers, Stugatz, have made so much money off of everything this is, which is controlling the fighters and using them, paying them abhorrently, throwing them in the body machine mill and then making money that helps Disney and helps him and Vince McMahon get rich while he's drunkenly playing at blackjack tables, stacked chips, stacked grotesquely high because he can, speaking at the Republican National Convention and now arming a fan base of... I mean, these are knuckle draggers that I have fought for a long time, Stu Guts, because I haven't respected the mixed martial arts enough. This undercurrent of this is the safe space for our people, and we're going to cater to it, and we're going to become more and more powerful, all powerful, where he's running the ability to produce what ESPN is putting on its airwaves to God's Very few people have that power. You're angry about it, but at this point, can we be surprised by it? That he's allowed to do it, that there's a lane for people to make a lot of money. I'm not, you know what? I'm not, I, the part that I'm angry about is not that he does it, Stugatz. It's, the part that makes me angry is, hey, people, do you see what's happening here? Like, do you see how obvious this is? Is it, is it not so obvious you can't see it. It sounds like you're angry that it's happening, though. Um, but that's good. That's cool because I am. No, I'm. But I'm not. I'll, I'll well, you should it. be angry. No, I don't. Man. I don't. I mean, I don't like it because I, I don't. I don't like Donald Trump. So that's that's why I don't like it. And also, there's a double standard that I called out earlier. But you know, but what what bothers me is that it's Donald Trump. <laughs> the the part that bothers me is how obvious of a troll job it is in that photo. Look at Dana White's face on that and look at Tucker Carlson's face on that. And if you can He's see... He's very pleased with himself, yes. Yep. The, when they were all walking out, the three of them, Dana's smiling there, but in the, it, they were trying to be cool and then you had just Tucker behind them like cheesing, yeah. just like high-fiving people. <laughs> it was a weird but, thing. But, but this, this for them can feel like Chris Bosh. You remember when Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron came up on the stage uh, for the first time? When they turned around, you saw on Chris Bosh's face a surprise, like, holy shit, I'm famous. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he got the energy of it surprised that Dwayne and LeBron tried to be cool about it. And when they turned around, couldn't be. But Bosh dissolved entirely. That's Tucker Carlson. That was Tucker. Yeah. That was Tucker. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they, ah, high five for you. High he's five the Bosh. Anytime someone gets like churned by the the PC machine and cancel culture, they find their allies and they they revel in it. And it's how something like Russell Brand happens, where they just go deeper and deeper and deeper until. People have convinced themselves that everyone's making up lies and accusations to shut this freedom fighter up. It's 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 not easy to be unpopular. It's why I'm on an island with Victor Wembanyama <laughs> trying to save our great game of basketball. Right. No, but nada. But when you walk out 
to the octagon side because I've sat octagon side. When you walk out and there's 20,000 people like just cheering, it's not even for you, but it feels like everybody's looking at you. It's a crazy feeling. Oh, it's feeling. the gladiator spectacle. Like it's, it's, it must be wonderful to anybody who's in the middle of it. 